Welcome to the news on Enyumba TV. We are reaching you from the commercial city of Aba. First, the headlines. Protest Day 6. Abia residents still boycott action. Military sends warning to protesters flying Russian flag in Nigeria. Federal government asks workers to register for 40,000 Naira rice. Thanks for joining us on the news at this time. My name is Esther Chima. Now the news in detail. Abia residents have continued to shun the nationwide protest against hunger and bad governance as the action, which is gaining ground in the north and southwest region, entered its day six. The protests have been generally ignored in the, south, in the entire southeast zone as the people say they have no interest in the action as it might not achieve anything meaningful. Some of the residents who spoke on the condition of anonymity said that the release of Nandikano from detention mattered to them more than protest against bad governance, asking those who voted for the All Progressives Congress APC-led federal government to bear the consequences of their action. On Monday, business activities and normal lives moved on without interruption in Abia State, except banks, which normally remain closed on Mondays. There is free flow of both human and vehicular traffic. Right from August 1, when the protests began, protesters have never been cited in any part of Abia State. Abia State government has frowned at the wrong usage of schools handed over to missions. This is according to the Commissioner for Information and Culture, Prince Okekano, who briefed journalists after this week's State Executive Council meeting presided over by Governor Alex Oti. The government insisted that such schools must be used exclusively for educational activities while setting up a special committee to recover schools flaunting this directive. Prince Okekano also disclosed that about 12,000 teachers across the state will undergo massive training during this summer break to prepare them for the emergence of the new look schools by September. The Information Commissioner reiterated government's warning to those who drive without number plate or covered number plate to desist. On his part, the Special Advisor to the Governor on Media and Publicity, Ferdinand Ekoma, disclosed that Abia government is yet to get any court order on the reported removal of the newly coronated Ezaro. Federal government has upgraded the National Institute for Nigerian Languages, Ninlan, in Aba, Abia State, into a degree awarding institution. This upgrade, confirmed by the National Universities Commission, NUC, marks a major milestone for the institute, which had sought this status for over three decades. Professor Obia Jolo Emejolo, the outgoing executive director of Ninlan, announced that the NUC has approved the institute to offer full-time degree programs in a range of disciplines. The new programs will include bachelor's degree in early education, business education, library and information science, Igbo and community studies, Igbo language, linguistics, and mass communication. Federal government will not tolerate calls for coup and the waving of foreign flags by some protesters. This is according to the defense chief. Christopher Musa after a meeting between security chiefs and President Bola Tinubu. He said the meeting discussed the call for a coup and the waving of Russian flags by some protesters in some northern states like Kaduna and Kano. According to him, most of those flying the flags are children who are being sponsored, describing the action as crossing the red line. Criminals have taken over, a lot of looting, a lot of uh, stealing and all sorts happening. And besides that, I'm also aware, we're also aware that I'm seeing, all of us have seen it, where some uh, f foreign flags have been flown within the sovereignty of Nigeria, and that is totally unacceptable. Kaduna State Security Council has imposed a 24-hour curfew on Kaduna and Zaria metropolitan cities. Thousands of youths, with some carrying Russian flag, were out on the streets on day five of the nationwide end bad governance protests in the state. It led to attack on facilities, including a bank located in Tudun Wada area of Kaduna Metropolis, where vehicles of staff parked within the bank premises were destroyed and valuable items scattered away from inside the vehicles.
The hoodlums looted government and private buildings, setting fire to a security patrol vehicle belonging to the Kaduna State Vigilance Service, and also attempted to snatch a police armored personnel carrier before the driver maneuvered the crowd of protesters who climbed on the vehicle. Meanwhile, Nigerian police force says it arrested 31 persons for what it described as treason for producing and distributing Russian flags and calling for anarchy. False Public Relations Officer ACP Moyewa Dejobi said 30 persons were arrested in Kaduna, while one person who was recruiting persons for distribution of the flag was arrested in Kano. He also said the number of persons arrested who are not protesters but criminal elements, rioters in connection with the end bad governance protests are 873, up from 861 at the weekend. He spoke during the joint press briefing of spokespersons of security and response agencies at the headquarters of the Department of State Services, DSS. In a related development, Department of State Services DSS has arrested a tailor in Kano State over the possession and mass production of Russian flags in the northern region. The secret police made this known in a statement issued by each spokesman, Peter Afunaya in Abuja. Afunaya stated that an investigation into the matter had commenced and sponsors of the tailors would be apprehended very soon. And in TV gathers that the protest took a new twist in Kano State as protesters were seen clutching and holding up banners bearing the Russian flag. The protesters made up of mainly underage boys were seen chanting songs in Hausa and running through the streets in a protest. Security operatives on Monday dispersed protesters in the Karoo area of the Federal Capital Territory. The protesters were just assembling when security agents went after them and arrested three. There was also a low turnout of protesters in Federal Capital Territory on the fifth day of the nationwide protest against hardship and bad governance. The demonstration was peaceful until the police fired several tear gas to disperse the protesters. Despite President Bola Tinubu's appeal for an immediate suspension of the nationwide protest, residents of River State also took to the streets in continuation of the hunger strike, of the hunger protest rather. The protesters gathered at the federal government secretariat, blocking sections of the road from Hotel Presidential Junction, making bonfires with tires. The protest, which began at the usual pleasure park, saw demonstrators chanting and waving the Nigerian flag and palm fronds. However, the continued protest in the state suggested that the president's appeal fell on deaf ears, with demonstrators determined to press on with their demands. It was a similar story in Kassina State, where several protesters took to the streets, waving the Russian flag and three leaves. The protesters, mostly young people and children, kick-started the protest from the late President Omar Musa Yaradwa's family house at Yaradwa quarters in Kassina, chanting, Hunger is killing us. But police officers fired tear gas to disperse the protesters. Some protesters in Zamfara were also spotted waving the Russian flag in Guzwa, the state capital. Mostly comprising children and youths, the aggrieved residents marched across Guzwa, notably Tandunwada, Freedom Square, Government House, to Gadabu, among other areas. Russian embassy in Nigeria says they have no connection to protesters in the northern region who were seen carrying Russian flags during the ongoing nationwide and bad governance protest. Enyimba TV understands that Russia has been accused of meddling in West African countries' politics, but the embassy stated that they do not interfere in internal affairs, including those of Nigeria. The embassy in a statement said the protesters' actions do not reflect any official Russian government policy, while adding that the Russian government and officials are not involved or coordinating these activities. A day after President Bola Tinubus addressed the nation in the wake of the end bad governance protest, Peter Obi is criticizing the commander-in-chief, saying the nationwide broadcast does not reflect the harsh realities faced by Nigerians. 
the 2023 presidential candidate for the Labour Party in a series of tweets, urged President Tinubu to distance himself from sycophants and surround himself with individuals who will present the unvarnished truth. He lamented the failure of the federal government to address the demands, which fueled the nationwide hunger protests. Federal government has concluded plans to sell a 50 kg bag of rice at 40,000 naira to public servants with a view to alleviating the food crisis in the nation and its effects on Nigerians. This was disclosed in a letter from the Federal Ministry of Special Duties and Intergovernmental Affairs, which was signed by the Director of Human Resources of the Ministry, Jayesimi Abimbola. The letter said all interested staff members were to complete a Google form and submit it to the Director of Human Resources for endorsement. It noted that payment for and the distribution of the rice would be coordinated by designated offices, while the Chairman, Joint Union Council of the Ministry, would serve as an observer for transparency reasons in the course of the exercise. Federal High Court sitting in Lagos has declared null and void the sale of Nigerian Air Limited to Ethiopian Airlines. Justice Ambrose Lewis Alogoa, in his judgment, stopping the sale, ordered that the proposed establishment of a national carrier Nigeria Air by the federal government should not be carried out. The judge held that all the relief sought are granted except for the relief asking for 2 billion naira as damages for the injuries suffered by the plaintiffs as a result of their wrongful exclusion and the wrongful action, unlawful bidding and selection processes for the Nigerian Air Project. House of Representatives has dissolved the current ad hoc joint downstream and midstream committee investigating the importation of adulterated petroleum products, the non-availability of crude oil for domestic refineries, and other energy security issues. A statement by the House spokesman Akin Rotimi said the decision was taken at the committee's inauguration. According to Akin, the ad hoc committee had been dissolved and a new one would be constituted. He added that the new committee will consist of honorable members selected for their expertise, competence, and integrity. You're watching Anyamba TV News. After the short break, the news will continue with foreign business and sports updates. Please stay tuned. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying tuned and welcome back. Now the, the news continues. Sheikh Hasina's 15-year rule as Bangladesh Prime Minister ended as she fled after more than a month of deadly protest and the military announced it would form an interim government. Hasina has sought to quell nationwide protests against her government since early July, but she fled the country after brutal unrest in which nearly 100 people were killed. Bangladesh Army Chief General Waka Uz Zaman said in a broadcast to the nation on state television that Hasina had resigned and the military would form a caretaker government. At least 66 people were killed on Monday after millions of Bangladesh took to the streets across the South Asian country. And from the business scene, Former President Olusegu Obasanjo says those benefiting from the lucrative business of fuel importation are going to make efforts to frustrate the Dangote Petroleum Refinery. Obasanjo stated this in the wake of allegations by the president of the Dangote Group, Alhaji Alinko Dangote, that some mafias were making efforts to frustrate the $20 billion refinery. In an interview, the former president described the Dangote refinery as something that should encourage both Nigerians and non-Nigerians. He further disclosed that Nigeria made a deadly mistake by putting all its eggs in what he called one basket of oil, ignoring gas and agriculture. And now sports. Nigeria's favor Ophili was in tears after she stormed to the final of the 200-meter race in the 2024 Paris Olympic. 
officially qualified for the final after picking up the second automatic sport in the race on Monday reigniting Nigerians' hopes for a medal at the Games. Ophili is the first Nigerian to reach the milestone since Mary Onyali raced to the final of the women's 200-meter event at the Atlanta 96 Games in the U.S. Born in 2002, about six years after Onyali achieved the feat, Ophili will be aiming to better her compatriots' bronze-winning run. The final is billed for Wednesday by 8.40 p.m. And with our sports story, we wrap up this edition of the news on Enyimba TV at this time. But before we go, here is a recap of the top stories. Protest Day 6, Abia residents still boycott action. Military sends warning to protesters flying Russian flag in Nigeria. Federal government asks workers to register for 40,000 Naira rise. Now that's our package of the news for now. Please join us for more updates in our subsequent bulletins. Meanwhile, don't forget to subscribe to this channel on YouTube. Click on the notification bell to receive alerts when new videos are uploaded. Thanks so much for watching. On behalf of the production crew, my name is Esther Chema. Have for yourself a wonderful day ahead.